I'm Rafael from Nepata and I love listening to you today FM. My name is Dan Gudla and I'm from Australia but I'm part region from Rotraki and I love listening to today FM Rocks. For the best music and less talk, we tune in to Today FM in Nasilai Village. Today FM Rocks. My name is Inaya Ali and I'm from Ba and I love the big breakfast on Today FM. I just love it and hope you love it too. My name is Jay from La Pasa. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM Rocks. My name is Naushin and I'm from Sambeto and I love Today FM. Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Good evening, I'm Edwin Nand and this is FBC News. Tonight, more support for village bylaws. Prime Minister vows to continue the fight against climate change and taxman to keep a close eye on second-hand motor dealers. More communities vulnerable to the effects of climate change will be receiving government assistance Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Morama says the effects are projected to get worse in the future and Fiji must continue fighting. Kelly Vadala reports. It is the devastating impact of climate change that has prompted the Fijian government to lead the fight on a blobso level. My government will continue to find ways to work with you in the community to help you succeed and that we will be unyielding on the global stage in our efforts to protect Fiji and the entire world from the consequences of climate change. As we look forward to next year, as we look to next year, the fight, the mu the fight must continue because the effects of climate change are already here and they are only projected to get worse. Commissioner Central Setara Gitali says two communities in the Central Division have been assisted through funding under government's disaster risk and reduction program. This will, um, will be a, a continuing program for, uh, for government. In the Central Division, two, uh, two communities have been assisted so far, one of which is uh, Nambitu in Tokotoka, and the second is uh, this one. Baini Marama was speaking to villages in Kumitai level, saying we should demand strong action on climate change for the sake of future generation. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority will strictly monitor the recent customs duty imposed on the importation of used or reconditioned hybrid vehicles. A team from FERCA will be out on the field before and after the duty is imposed to ensure motor vehicle dealers are adhering to the duty rate changes announced earlier. FERCA Chief Executive Vishwanath Das says used or reconditioned hybrid motor vehicles that have been cleared under duty concessions before January 1st must reflect concessions in the sale price. Villages around Fiji have shown overwhelming support for the new village bylaws. This was revealed by Ito K Affairs Permanent Secretary Naipote Katunitambua after five rounds of public consultations. Ali Kimbia has the details. Government officials have made presentation at various provincial council meetings and gone into villages promoting the village bylaws. Overall, uh, there's a big support uh, for these bylaws to be uh, implemented in the villages uh, to safeguard our, our cultures and tradition and also uh, protect uh, what we, our identity. The ministry is pleased the proposed bylaws are gaining attraction with the very people who will be affected. This new version of village bylaws are making a comeback after a lapse of 50 years. Katani Tumbua says it will preserve and protect Itoke culture and tradition. We are hoping that uh, during this uh, festive season in December and uh, January, uh, our, our villages will uh, go through the, the village by law and then uh, we can further discuss during uh, the second rounds of submission. The final version of the bylaws is expected to be ready by July 2017. Ali FBC News. The Lombasa Sugar Mill is hoping for a good 2017 season after this year's crushing figures showed a drop in production. However, Eleanor Turangai View reports, despite other problems, it's been a good year for mill operations in the north. 
The shortage of cane supply to the Lambasa sugar mill for the 2016 crushing season impacted FSC's efficiencies. This resulted in about 800 hours of stoppage for the mill in the 20-week crushing period. The main challenge is uh, having to restart so many times. In fact, I think this is the record times uh, that we stop the mill and then have to restart the boiler. I think we stopped for more than 50 hours in that 800 hours of, uh, of uh, cane supply stops. That gives us a lot of pressure on our equipment. In fact, that um, uh, meant that we couldn't achieve better operational results. Lambasa Mill Manager Karia Christopher says shortage of labor in the cane fields was also a major challenge for the Fiji Sugar Corporation. There's uh, a few mechanical lives this only and hopefully uh, there are now cooperatives formed to, to acquire more uh, cop uh, the mechanical harvesters. So we look forward next year to a better continuous uh, uh, crushing operation because I believe that the um, cane supply will be much stronger. In the 20-week crushing season, the Lambasa mill crushed 653,000 tons of cane, producing 73,180 tons of sugar with a TCTS of 8.9. Could have been better had we had a continuous operation because we could not link up from the cane supply. Um, the mill can do a lot better in terms of uh, capacity wise. We have to slow down because we need to match up with the uh, cane supply. FSC, however, says it has been a very good season despite the natural disasters that hit the country. It hopes production in 2017 will be much better. Eleanor Turane will. FBC News. A student was allegedly assaulted and raped along Holland Street in Suva this morning. Police spokesperson Anna Naisoro says the 23-year-old woman was attacked as she was walking along the road and police are looking for the suspect. Anyone with information is requested to call Crime Stoppers on 919 or 9905-646. After the break on FBC News, street party preparations almost complete as FBC gears up for two New Year's Eve bashes. That and more coming up. Welcome back. Two government ships are headed for Ngamea Island in Tavuni tomorrow carrying a cargo of rehabilitation material. The supplies include machines, construction material, along with personnel to help rebuild houses and health facilities that were damaged due to landslides caused by Tropical Depression 04F. Two immediate projects are the rebuilding of the Indriketi Health Center and the nursing station, which, was, which were lost when a landslide carried them into the sea. Three homes in the village burnt down due to the landslide. The court will decide next month whether Member of Parliament Moses Mbulitavu and former businessman Jagat Karuna Ratne's trial will start afresh or continue from where it was left off. Karuna Ratne and MP Mbulitavu are charged in relation to allegedly writing seditious comments in public places four years ago. Shireen Shivan reports. Jagat Karuna Ratne appeared in court this morning. However, Moses Mbulitavu was not present. His lawyer Barbara Malimali asked Magistrate Shagit Somaratne to excuse Bulitavu as he is currently in Ratuma and will return to Suva next week. The trial initially started before Chief Magistrate Usiya Ratuvili last month. However, Magistrate Ratuvili recused himself after a witness mentioned late Reverend Manasa Lasaro's name. Magistrate Ratuvili declared his possible conflict of interest saying late Reverend Lasaro was a close relative. The matter was then transferred to Magistrate Somaratne. Defense lawyers Aman Ravindra Singh and Barbara Malimali have asked that the trial begin from where it was left off 
As three people who were given immunity in this case have already given their statement in the week-long trial last month. Trial will be held from May 15th to 19th. However, whether to begin anew will be decided in the next mention on February 3rd. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. The weatherman has given the thumbs up for the New Year's long weekend as we count down to the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation 3112 New Year's Eve bashes. Generally fine weather is forecast until New Year's Day. Along with perfect weather, you can expect great entertainment and music. Rachel Nath tells us more. Preparations are in full swing for the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation 3112 New Year's Eve bashes. We spoke to a few people in Suva and Lotoka who are already excited about welcoming 2017 with a bang. So I'll be ready tomorrow to get the party started with one baby mix and everything, hopefully everything goes well and I'll enjoy myself and uh, hopefully the Western people will enjoy it. Those of you who want to watch BNT live come with your family because it will be live and free. Oh, uh, personally, I'm grateful uh, because uh, most of the time uh, it's usually held in Suva. Now we are thankful that you're bringing it closer to the Sugar City. Looking forward to be part of this 3112 FBC street party, uh, especially some rides and foods. Um, I'll be ex it'll be very exciting. I'll ex be expecting nice food and good entertainment. 3112 party, I expect it to be a blast. Um, I know it's going to be a blast the news and everything has been advertising it and I'm looking forward to the entertainment, good music. A few of the highlights you can expect are Fiji's biggest mannequin challenge, water fights and great live music and entertainment. It's not just about uh, watching people on stage, it's about uh, good music, live music, uh, DJ type music, dancing, food, um, you know, uh, rides, and, and there's a lot of stuff. There's a, there's a wet area, we'll have water fights. It's going to be a, a complete night of entertainment for people who uh, don't want to be sitting at home. They want to go out and, and, and enjoy themselves. The 3112 parties will take place at Suvas Albert Park and Carnival Park in Lotoka and will also be featured on FBC TV from 10 p.m. Rachel Nath, FBC News. The Fiji Commerce Commission has been on its toes to ensure customers enjoy the festive season. Commerce Commission Chief Executive Joel Abraham says the enforcement agency has reviewed their strategy to engage better with businesses at this time of the year. Senya Nimboila has the details. Abraham says with the commission having only 41 staff, they have to strive to provide best service to all Fijians. Previously we used to do say uh, 100 to 200 inspections a month. In the last week or so we've crossed 700 inspections. So that's a good sign. <laughs> we are becoming more productive. According to shopper Alnieta Senimbai, traders are currently doing a great job this festive season. Well, um, I think I would say they are and, uh, and I think it's a great idea that they are doing what they're doing. Um, the reason being with all these um, occasion uh, of the festive season, they actually kind of come out of it and make things easier for the, uh, for the people of Fiji. And um, I do believe that they wouldn't even go outside the shop uh, being, you know, I would say, breaking the rules. But I think it's, it's great what they're doing. 46-year-old shopper Lele Wasarimbebu says more effort has been shown by traders to cater for customers' demands. Uh, I think traders are complying to the Commerce Commission decree. This festive season, I can see that most of the shops are comfortable for shoppers. It's clean, their services are good and prices are affordable. They are also working together with the private sector and other relevant agencies to provide better service delivery in 2017. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Overseas, outgoing U.S. President Barack Obama's turned anger into action over claims Russia tried to interfere in the U.S. election. Obama is expelling 35 Russian diplomats and is closing two U.S.-based intelligence compounds. And now, the man who's already dreading his New Year's long weekend hangover, Jamie Toro with sports. Like how you assume that I'll be hungover over the weekend, Edwin. I'm sure you'll be doing the same as well. 
Very good evening up ahead in sports. Fiji Barbers team to Sud America Sevens named. And Fiji FA to focus on local league next year. These stories and more after the break. It's me, it seems, uh, yeah, right from the Rekidiki town. Our uh, super breakfast show me my sunta hoon. Jab breakfast show me rehta hai Ashmeer aur Sangeeta ke saath. Kese ke saath sunte sunte kya ra se do bhabi di ka show jiten shangye. You know something? Reki Reki Mirchi FM is hot. I am Shreta, Dukusha Nasari. People are watching Eid Ka Chand, but my Chand is Mirchi FM. Nakasi, Mirchi FM, we are doing Mirchi FM. My name is Jabir, we are living in Nasari. We are listening to Mirchi FM all the time. We are listening to Mirchi FM all the time. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Alivereti Veto Kani and Aminoni Nasila Sila are set to make a comeback to the Sevens code after being named in the Fiji Barbers final squad for the Sud America Sevens. The tournament will be held in Uruguay and Chile and will feature teams from Argentina, USA, Canada, Chile, Brazil, Uruguay, Colombia and Fiji. Other big names in the squad include Kalione Nasoko, Risiati Tandulala and Seru Dabuilati. The tournament is scheduled to be played on the 6th and 7th of January in Uruguay and the 14th and 15th in Chile. The side departs our shores next week. The Fiji Football Association will focus on local league competitions next year. Many districts could not take part in this year's National Club Championship because they didn't complete their league competitions. We're hit there with the story. Fiji Football Association Chief Executive Bob Kumar says Tropical Cyclone Winston affected many districts, but come 2017, they will come down hard on districts who don't take the local league seriously. This year should be an exception because of the uh, devastation forced, uh, caused by Cyclone Winston and the other ha happenings. There were a lot of commitments with the, um, with, with the Rio Olympic and other events. <laughs> Local league competition is where districts find talent and Kumar says more attention is needed here. One major concern is the local club championship. Many districts have not complied with the statutory requirements. They have not played uh, the local league. Latakas Press FC won this year's NCC title defeating Suvas Bureta FC on penalty kicks in the final. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. All Black prop Tali Famuina will quit New Zealand rugby to join French club Toulouse at the start of the next European season. The 30-year-old Auckland Blues player has played 46 tests for New Zealand, mainly from the bench since his debut in 2012. He will play most of the next Super Rugby season for the Blues. Yeah, well, if you're going to lose someone like Charlie, uh, you know, that's been the, our one-two punch in the tight head role. Uh, it's come time for a wee while now, so you wouldn't want to lose both of them. So Bradley Wiggins officially announced his retirement from professional cycling yesterday. But the overriding impression on a day which six months ago would have been one celebration for one of Britain's greatest and best-loved sportsmen was instead one of unease at how to celebrate his career given the controversies of the past few months. The New Zealand cricket side defeated Bangladesh by 67 runs in the second one-day international yesterday. That's sports for this evening. It's back to Edwin now with business. Three new first-time investors entered the stock market this week, targeting shares in Fijian Holdings Limited and Vision Investment Limited. The South Pacific Stock Exchange says this brings the total number of new buyers to 283 for the entire year. The overall market value this week rose to $1.3 billion thanks to positive price returns by Amalgamated Telecom Holdings, Please Global Limited and Fijian Holdings. It was mostly fine weather across the country today with some early cloudiness and scattered showers along the eastern shores of the main islands. Temperatures were comfortable with Nandi, Lotoka and Ba hitting the high of 31 degrees while other major centres were slightly cooler. Tomorrow will be another fine day with excellent weather for New Year's Eve celebrations.
and looking ahead to New Year's Day, more of the same. At sea, fresh southeast winds 15 to 20 knots and moderate swells. Recapping our main stories, Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority to keep a close eye on second-hand motor dealers from next week. Village bylaws gain more support following five rounds of public consultations and Prime Minister Voreng Mbaini Marama says fight against climate change will continue. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM and now to our poll question. Do we need to control the number of cars on our roads? To answer, visit our FPC website. And remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And from the news team and I, Happy New Year's and stay safe. Good night.